against it by Andrew Griffith. Um, Andrew Griffith um, and then Jeremy Hunt and then Dawn Butler. Sir Patrick, uh, good afternoon. And sorry for the slightly uh, forensic tone, but these are very grave matters. They're some of the most grave matters that we as members of Parliament are ever called to, to vote on. So I want to stay with slide three, which is one of those you presented on Sunday, the one that, that's called Winter Scenarios. And when you look at that, that blue line is a clear outlier. Its peak is almost double the level of the next highest scenario. Uh, and the other three scenarios all have their own peak forecasts lying within a range of about 20% of each other. So it really is very different in terms of the slide that you present. If you didn't have that blue line, for example, you'd have to change the scale. So at the time you presented that data to the Prime Minister, did you yourself understand the assumptions behind the blue line that we now know is the Public Health England Cambridge model? Well, I think uh, what we try to do when we present data from SAGE is to look at the integrated SPIM output. And that is the six-week ones and in due course would be an integrated reasonable worst case scenario. Um, that slide is of independent groups and what they have modelled and as you can see, there's a lot of variability in that slide, with most of the groups coming out on the right-hand side and one being left, left and, and higher. And clearly that is an outlier uh, for the reasons of the way in which they've done their model and assumptions. And, and I think uh, that is the reason why we tend to go for integrated views from SPIM, not to go with individual group projections. Do you, do you know what it is in those assumptions that produces that very different shape to that curve? Uh, well, the assumptions underlying the models will be published in full, and so it'll be possible to look at the reasons why curves differ. Are they, are they in the public domain now, before the vote that we have to make tomorrow? Uh, the intention is to get the information on the models out, um, I think, as soon as possible. I don't know exactly when that's coming out, but very soon, I think. It would have to be today if it's today. Yeah, I think, I think, I think there, I think there are some documents coming out today if we can get them out today. I mean, they're not, they're not ours, so they would need to come out from the, from the groups. I understand that, and it would certainly be very helpful, I think, to, uh, to colleagues if it was. I mean, when you looked at that chart, I mean, it forecasts more than 4,000 deaths a day at peak, which is, I don't think any country in the world has seen that rate of deaths. But also, if you then bring it back to today and the time that you were presenting that to the Prime Minister and his advisers, I mean, it would already have been off the curve. I mean, it would already have been predicting around 1,000 deaths a day at this particular moment in time. Um, and can you just remind me how many deaths there were yesterday? Uh, I can't remember the exact figure. It was 138 or 100. Do you have the exact I'll, I'll figure? Um, Mondays are always, are always Mondays artificially are always low. low. Today will be artificially higher for the same reason. I wouldn't uh, concentrate on individual days. What, what we have done is looked at the um, initial portion of those curves in relation to the data and indeed in relation to the six week forecast as well. And what you see is that the initial portion of those curves for the other um, projections are there or thereabouts for two of them and higher for two, uh, higher than the, the real data for two of them. And ultimately, of course, data trumps models. So sitting, sitting here today, I agree with that, but sit, sitting here today then with the ability of that data, would your advice be to colleagues to essentially discard that model, to, to accept that it's somewhat discredited uh, and that we should set that aside when thinking about whether this is the right course of action? Well, I, I don't think it's at all fair to say it's discredited. Um, these are scenarios that were put together on assumptions to look at what a reasonable worst-case scenario might be. And as Chris has said, a reasonable worst-case scenario is something that you do not want to happen, but is something that could plausibly happen if things went in a certain direction. I think the right graphs to focus on in terms of forward projection are the six-week medium-term projections They've been shown to be relatively good over the past four weeks. You'd expect them to project forward. And again, they're assuming nothing changes going forward, and things may well change, as you know. Uh, and, and to base it also on the data we have today, as Chris has said, which shows where things are in hospitals at the moment, which are filling up. And I think these are not forecasts. These are models which tell you how things can look.
um, but they are not forecast and they should be looked at um, knowing that. Would you like me That's to just add, would you like me to add just one comment on that? Uh, uh, I think that if there is someone whose feeling is that the difference between them being supportive of these very uh, restrictive and difficult measures is the difference between 1,000 deaths a day and 4,000 deaths a day, if that is the case, and remembering that if there were 1,000 deaths a day, that would imply significant pressure on multiple other bits of the NHS, this, I think, becomes a very material question. But I think all of us would say that the, the rates would probably be lower than that top peak. But I think the, uh, reaching the peak which we reached uh, in April uh, strikes me as an entirely realistic situation. So if people wish to take a conservative view, uh, I mean that in a small c sense, uh, that would be something which the short-term projections would take us to. Andrew? Very helpful. No, 